also with us through the close, Nick Calamos, the co-chief investment officer at Calamos Asset Management. And Nick, let's start with you and let's start with the economy. We just heard from Dean Mackey kind of saying no chance really of a double dip this year. Do you agree that the economy is to some extent on sure footing here? You know, I think for this year it is. There's been a lot of stimulus, both monetary and fiscal, that's uh, still working its way through the system. So I think we're in good shape this year. Unfortunately, the very high debt levels that we have, and, and they're growing, makes us very vulnerable as an economy to, uh, to minor, uh, minor adjustments that can magnify, uh, because of the leverage, into a... Uh, into another double dip. You know, it's interesting, and this is the same thing that came up with Dean. It kept saying, I think no double dip this year. We're okay this year. That's what I'm hearing from you. Are you, got, are you um, specifically, Nick, worried about next year then? You know, we're doing a lot of worrying. We've been saying that we're uh, short-term bullish, long-term scared right. uh, throughout the last year and a half. And, and when does that, you know, short-term bullish become short-term scared? And, and what we need to see here is employment take hold. We, need, we, we definitely need to see real estate assets firm up here and uh, a little bit better uh, perspective on how we're going to handle the heavy debt load and not let, you know, a 200 basis point moving interest rates shut the economy down again. You, you expect to trickle down here, Nick? I mean, is the stimulus that what's left really going to help us that much at all? Christina Romer has said uh, all the growth boost that you're going to get is done so far. So what is the rest of the money really going to do for us? Well, you got to remember that corporate America is in a great position right now to uh, ramp up capital spending. We're going to continue to get an inventory boost here. And, uh, you know, so the capital spending led recovery is possible. The reality is, though, if things start to slow down, we're going to get stimulus round two and monetary injection round two. And they're not going to let this thing uh, wind down. What we're going to end up with, though, is try to figure out how we're going to deal with this excessive amount of debt. So from an investment standpoint, look beyond the beyond these borders. Think global, be bold, but be careful. Nick, let me get your take on M&A because it does seem like it's got to be a positive factor for the markets here. We've seen uh, a, a lot of deals already this year and just got the biggest one uh, so far uh, on Monday. What do you think about the outlook for M&A? Will we have another record year? Is it that key to the market? You know, I, I think it's very key to the market here. Unfortunately, spending the, uh, the cash with, uh, for acquisitions does not add to the uh, employment picture. Generally, there's additional layoffs that go with these acquisitions. But in general, uh, that's a very healthy sign. Companies are looking at ways to, uh, you know, to move assets into stronger hands and to rethink uh, how they're going to compete globally. And the acquisitions do make some sense in here. And they seem to be coming across at levels that, uh, for the most part, are reasonable. They're pay paying prices that make some sense here. Nick, what are you expecting for, for retail sales? How is that going to pan out this year? Because the, the employment picture hasn't really gotten better. Still, consumer spending is up, I think, four months in a row now. Uh, and obviously, consumer spending is so key to the economy. Well, I, I think consumers are feeling a little bit wealthier because of the bounce back in assets over the last year. So that gives them a little bit of comfort that they can uh, spend. Uh, I'm concerned the savings rate still is relatively low, around 5%. It seems like there's... It's going to be a tough ro road here ahead from a consumer standpoint. So for the most part, I think the economy's got to be driven by exports and capital spending. And the consumer is going to play a smaller role, maybe only 60 percent of GDP instead of nearly 70. Ca capital spending, uh, one of the reasons that you like some of the companies you're into, EMC and Infosys. I mean, the technology companies, do you expect business spending to really be supportive of those? I do. You know, uh, cap spending's at a 40-year low relative to GDP. And for companies to compete in this global market space, they need to focus on technology that's going to make them a smarter, more flexible business. And EMC is in a great position to do that. Infosys helps them do that. And one of the nice things, if you find great growth companies, you don't have to worry too much about the economy. Infosys is returning 50% on capital in their business, growing top line to 30%. EMC re returning about 70% on capital, owns VMware that's also growing very rapidly. So despite being in a bad economy, these companies are executing extremely well. Hey, Nick, it sounds like you're staying well away from the financials. Uh, do you think that uh, financial regulation and all the back and forth is, is going to continue to be an overhang? You know, I think it is. They're going to they're be hamstrung with additional regulations, more capital controls that's going to lower the return on equity. And then, of course, uh, there's still a lot of real estate to work its way through the system. We have not let the markets clear. So we're very cautious about the uh, financial exposure, uh, we do have exposure in the capital markets in firms like T. Rowe Price and Franklin Resources because we see opportunity there. 
but the banks in general were very underweight. And we, and we have been even before the crisis. You know, I want to ask you quickly, Nick, because we were talking with Judd uh, at the top of this segment about uh, Greece and about the situation there. I know when you're telling investors to look internationally, or at least I'm guessing you're looking to China, to India, what do you think about the situation in Greece, though? I mean, even if France and Germany do come in and bail them out, it's, it's, it's not a good situation for the EU in general, is it? No, it's not. Um, <clears throat> you know, in general, when you put together a union like that, and people lose the control of their monetary policy, there's going to be some, some difficulties. And, and typically, the first time you have a real recession, the problems, problems come out. Uh, the good news is the financial markets are working properly here. Greece has been uh, less than forthcoming with their financial position. And of course, uh, they've mismanaged their, their debt levels. So overall, the markets are working properly. Uh, we'll see what, it, what, what ends up happening here. But there's also a lot of good opportunities outside of the okay. EU. So, all right.